Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? So what do I got now? I have that Camry with the fuel pump issue. Remember, I had a fuel pressure gauge on it. It had a, a hard start, and I was setting lean codes. And um, I went over about how if you followed what the code reader says, you'd be putting $500 worth of parts in this thing, and it wouldn't fix the problem. This is why you got to diagnose stuff. So here we go. I got the Camry right here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to throw the fuel pump in it. Now, the fuel pump is actually located under the back seat. So we're going to come over here. And the back seat has to come out. So on these, it's relatively simple. You just grab underneath the edge of the seat here and pull. And it releases the locking tabs. Same thing on this side. Just reach your hand underneath the edge here and pull. And it comes up and out. So now you pull the whole seat assembly out. Just gonna lay it on the roof of the car like that. This car, I, it depends on the car. This car's got a lot of dings and dents and stuff on it. And it's, I don't know if you can see the paint in it. It's, the car is not pretty. So I'm not overly concerned about this. Uh, if the car was really nice, I'd put a moving blanket over top and then lay this down. Since it's not, it's, it's, it's okay. I'm not overly concerned about that. So now the next step is you have to pull this panel out. Now this panel is held in place with like a dum-dum or a, see this? It's a very sticky substance. Uh, it's a seal. And I actually, I'm not crazy about how they do it. It works, but I'm not overly crazy about it. Uh, because basically, once you break the seal, you know, it'll never seal exactly right again. But it is what it is, you know. So i got to get something underneath the edge of this and pry this up. But a lot of times, too, it'll distort. So let me see how that works out. And I got my door panel tool basically just stuffed underneath the edge. And you can see it really wasn't even sealed all that well to begin with. So we're going to be pulling this out. And here's a connector here. It's actually the upper locking piece is actually broken. Whatever. So we're going to take this. You squeeze the tab right there. And you got to release it. I may have to do this two-handed, so I'm going to have to put this down. I finally got it to release. It took a little effort, but I got it. So now you have a bunch of eight millimeters. These holding it down. But i got to disconnect the three fuel lines. The top one there, and it's a vapor line. One of these is a, pa is a uh, pressure line, and one of them is a return line, probably. Or it could be another vent-type line. I'm not quite sure how the system works. So let me do that. Let me get all of these disconnected. Not even 100% certain how they disconnect. This one is, you basically push it, push this red locking piece out, and that will release the line. Basically, you're gonna push it that way. So I might have to get a small screwdriver. And let's do that and see where we wind up. So what that actually is, is you lift up the edge right there with a tool or something so this way you could slide that collet back like that and then I'm, this will now come off yep see that okay so now these yellow lines appear to be the same Let's see. Yep. So just make sure whenever you're doing something, especially in an enclosed area like this, that you are careful not to make these things go flying. Okay, well, they actually lock into place. But it actually has to come completely out. Because as you can see on the edge, right there, it blocks the line from coming up and out. So you have to get it completely out. So let me go ahead and do that. So that is it. You just basically pry it completely off and then pop it out. Like I said, just be careful so you don't lose the darn thing in the process. So now these lines, take this down. They should come yep, straight up. 
So now you tuck them away out of the way. And then you gotta get an eight millimeter and take those screws out. Do not use an electric drill or electric uh, ratchet or anything like that on this. Do this by hand, uh, basically, because now you have fuel fumes in here. And you use anything electric, you got sparks. Boom, don't do it. Now we got all the screws out, and like I said, do it by hand. Don't do it with a uh, battery operated, electric, anything like that. Don't do that. You can cause an explosion. So I got all of that out. There's that. Now here comes the tricky part. You gotta pull this thing out. You're gonna wind up getting fuel inside the car usually. So this whole thing has to come out. So let me do that. So there we go, the pump is out and I have it on my little cart, and I don't know if you can see this. Down inside, at the bottom, there is a lot of debris in this thing, and even on top here. There's just, a, I mean, I could, there's hair is floating in there, there's just a bunch of debris. So I don't know if the, if the screen is plugged up or what's going on, but I'm going to take this whole thing apart. And also, I'm going to check this tube here, I want to make sure there's not a pinhole or something in it. And that's why this thing winds up with zero fuel pressure after it gets shut off. So I've got to make sure that that's all okay. Let me show you the new pump. So there's the new pump. It's right from Toyota. You can't get an aftermarket for this. I did inquire into it. But I did have to do a fuel pump in one of these things a couple months back. So you got to disassemble this whole thing and take it apart. So I'm going to work on doing that right now. And if anything special comes up, I'll show you a video of that. Whenever I'm working on something like this too, to avoid damaging it, because this thing protrudes so much, the, the float piece itself, I will usually take the float arm off. This way I can avoid, you know, possibly bending it or damaging it or even, you know, because I could break the sender, because obviously the new pump doesn't come with a sender on this unit. So on this one, it's actually pretty simple. Most of them just snap in. This one has this little tab that gets pushed down. Once that gets pushed down, then all you gotta do, push it down and then that rolls over like that so then that comes out of its holder and voila, comes right out this way you avoid you know bending it denting it anything like that you know breaking the sending unit you know, this last thing I want to do now to get the pump out the pump is in that housing inside there to get that out you got to lift those tabs right there so let me do that so it's just a matter of picking up on these tabs slightly and then this whole assembly lifts up. Now also, the pump has that tube there. The tube is part of the pickup. And same thing, the way it connects here, I gotta lift up on a tab right here to get, to get that up and out. So let me do that and let me get that out. And then the whole thing will slide up and out. All right, so there we go. I have it up and out, and I think I actually found the problem. Check this out. See that? That's the fuel pressure regulator. And that's an O-ring that's pushed out. So, now, I noticed a few things as I was taking this thing apart. And I'm almost wondering if this pump has been replaced once before. The customer didn't say nothing. But that's, that will cause fuel pressure to bleed off. Especially since that's the pressure line right there. But I, like I said, I noticed that there are certain things that made me think to myself that this pump has been replaced. But the fact that the customer didn't tell me anything makes me wonder. So, and look at that. You see how those locking tabs are not in place? I didn't do this. Somebody else had done this. That's, that is not seated. So you can actually see, if you look, you see how bent and distorted that is, that is not supposed to be like that. This whole thing has to come apart anyway, so let me let me pop these off. These are just, like I said, same thing, just little plastic retainers. Let 
me get this thing off of there and take a better look. Okay, so I got all of those disconnected, and now let me pop this down. So now the pump will come out this way. I don't recall. I think I have to do the harness up here. Like so, so it'll feed through. Yep. Okay. I got a funny feeling somebody's already put a pump in this thing. But at this point, it's getting another pump. So let me mess with this. I'm gonna have to pop this regulator out and get this all back together. So let me get this apart first and then I'll explain what's going on. Okay, so that is the whole problem right there. But we are still, at because we're here, we are putting a pump in this thing regardless because I don't want to wind up with a problem. But I'm, I'm confident that this in itself was the problem. Now you can actually see how distorted that seal is right there. So now I'm going to have to get some O-rings that will work with this. I don't know where in the hell I'm going to get them, but I'm going to have to find something somewhere that's going to work. Um, when this goes back together, too, let me pop this pump off here. It's basically just a push tab right there. I already disengaged it. So now this pops straight out. Now when this goes back together, this collar here that you saw fall out, that goes there. And then this O-ring goes on top there. And what happens is that collar holds the o-ring in that spot and that inserts into that area right there now the funny thing is somebody had that backwards somebody had it like this somebody had the seal down here with the collar on that's not how it goes it goes the other way around so we got a couple of whammies here who basically whoever did this repair and I don't know who it was I, I'm going to I'm going to call a customer again to find out what's going on here because now this is a mystery that I'm not able to figure out I mean I know what's going on you know I figured that much out but you know who did what and why I don't know Let me see what I can figure out here but like I said it's getting a new fuel pump regardless uh, only because, you know, I have it, and I don't know the condition of that pump. Was it sucking air? Did it run dry? Did it ruin the, uh, the pump assembly inside there, the actual uh, gears? You know, who knows? Who knows? Plus, there's so much debris in this thing. Um, I'm actually going to clean this whole entire housing out. Let's actually look inside here. I don't know if I just gave you a close-up view of my nostril, but let's see. You look inside here. Look at all that debris inside there. You see that, right? All the black specks and stuff. So I'm gonna break clean this thing out, get it nice and clean. And then, like I said, I gotta figure out something with this. I'm not sure if I have any O-rings. I think I might. I think I have some O-rings left over from a, um, a job that I did on a Cadillac, maybe? And I might, be, it might have similar size O-rings that I can use. As long as they go in and they're, you know, they fit nice and snug, then I'm, I'm confident they're not going to be a problem. So, all right, let me go that route and see what happens. Now, I do not have an O-ring that'll fit this vehicle, or fit this that's even close to this. But giving this O-ring a good look, I don't see any nicks, scratches, or anything like that. It did fold over, but I don't see any actual damage to it other than it's slightly distorted. I think once it's seated, it'll be absolutely fine in there because it does go up inside right there and that surface area looks fine too. Now I've discussed the attributes of using that stuff, transmission assembly lube. The stuff is excellent and it's excellent for seals like this and it dissolves. It's a low temperature melting point too. So on this, I got to see because it might be better if I stick it this up inside there and then push the regulator in i'm going to try it both ways see whichever works best but that stuff an absolute must to have as far as i'm concerned um yeah basically you lube everything up really well you want to slobber it on there like you're icing a cake and then you put it together and then obviously once you're done any excess you just wipe off but this stuff dissolves in fuel and it melts at a very low temperature don't get red because red if you're ever using this on a transmission 
you'll think you have a transmission fluid leak once it melts. So, uh, yeah, let me get this in place. That did insert quite easy. I did stick the O-ring up inside there. As you can see, I glommed on a whole bunch of that transmission assembly gel. I glommed it onto the actual regulator itself. After the O-ring was seated inside there, I glommed a whole bunch of that stuff in there, and then basically just, boop, it popped right in. So now what I can do is I can put the fuel pump together. Basically, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the collar on and then the seal on and then insert that up into place on here and then I'm going to get everything uh, clipped into place make, making sure that this locks in to where it's supposed to be. Now that didn't just push out um, like on its own that was assembled wrong. There's no way that fuel pressure or anything could have made that pop past these locking clips because these pieces lock over these pieces so it was assembled wrong whoever did it all right, let's get going with that. And like I said, collar first, then O-ring. Just like that. And then I'm gonna slobber that up and put that together. If you look really close at the new pump compared to the old pump, you'll see how bent that actually is. See how the end of that is bent downward and this is kind of like straight across, like it's level. See, like those castle tops? This one is bent downward. That one is not. This one's actually hitting the filter or the screen. This one is not. So, like I said, that's why it's getting a new pump regardless. There we go. So that's all slobbered up. Now that's going to go back up into place. Like I said, up inside there. And that should work out fine. So let me get that done right now and actually I think I'll I might insert the wiring harness through no I, I can't I gotta do it last all right let me do that I mean I can it's just easier just to do it last taking it off might be a little difficult to push in the clip but no big deal so let me get this up and into place now that snapped together relatively easy I, you felt the seal you know stop for a moment and then as soon as I put pressure on that to palm it in place, you know, it snapped, it just clipped all together. And you can see how nice and firmly clipped that is. So that's installed the right way now. Now basically I just have to install the wiring harness, like so, and then I'm going to insert this whole thing in that housing. So that's it, that just drops right in place. So now what I want to do is I want to catch the wiring in this clip here, and this one actually clips in over here somewhere. Not arm sensor certain. I'll figure that out in a second. But let me get that all together. And then I have to route this part over and down because that's part of the pickup. So let me do that. So now that has a receiver groove, this pipe here, right there, that will insert into that piece there. So you got to bend this to get that down into place. And then the wiring harness clips in on the very top here. That's how that's supposed to look. Now let's catch this. So now with that all the way in the way it's supposed to be, this clips in down here. There's no O-rings in here. It's just a, uh, I guess it's like a bleed off or something. And they just use this. You don't hear like a splashing inside the vehicle since the pump is underneath the back seat. So that just clips on like that. No need to worry, like I said, about O-rings. Because as you see, it's got a giant opening right there. So now this is actually ready to take or to get the float reinstalled on there. And then one other thing too is, there's a tube inside the tank you have to disconnect. Uh, does it go? No, I'm sorry, it goes right here. And you have to disconnect it to get it out because it basically, like it's, a, it's what they call a saddle tank. What a saddle tank means is it's got a sump on the passenger side and it's got humps over for, you know, like the exhaust system or a dry shaft if it was an, if it was an all wheel drive. Then it's got a sump on the other side, like the driver's side. So basically you have to draw fuel from both sides because if it just draw, drew fuel from one side, you're gonna run empty and still have fuel on the other side. So they actually have a tube that runs over to the other side to draw fuel from that side. So basically it draws evenly. Uh, so when you're empty, you're actually empty on both sides. Some cars actually have, if it's a deep enough sump, they actually have a separate pump on that side to transfer fuel to the other side. So this does not have that, this just has a suction tube. 
So basically, once I get this thing down into place, that suction tube, I have to pull it up and then actually connect it once it's inside. So let me go ahead and put the, let me put this back on right now while I'm thinking about it. So it's just very simple. You just insert it. And like that. And then this. Oops. Oh, so I got that caught up on there. And then just like that. I can't do this one handed. Because I gotta hold that down slightly. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I got it. And that's it. And you want to be gentle with this. You don't want to bend this rod or anything like that because it's going to affect the uh, what the tank, what the um, gauge reads. So, and, oh, I didn't show you. If you look inside, I did clean this thing out pretty well with brake clean. So, all right. Let me go ahead and let me get this thing ready to install. All right, so just so you can see, there's that tube I was telling you about that you got to pick up and out of the tank. So... I'm going to get ready to drop this in place. And like I said, you have to pull this up like this and then get the pump about halfway in place. Uh, unfortunately, there's no way for me to film this and do it at the same time. So let me just get that part of it done and we'll go from there. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to bother hooking up the fuel pressure gauge because it's actually a little bit involved to hook up the fuel pressure gauge for me to show you exactly what's going on. But uh, let me let me just get this done and see what happens. So just like that is how you have to have it. You have to pull this up and through on this side here. Uh, this way it's not catching anything. Those two lines are not hooked to anything. So let's just get this down in place. Like I said, I can't film this at the same time. So there's that line in place. So now this whole thing can go back down inside and then we can bolt it back up. Again, do not use electric tools. You can use air tools or do it by hand. I prefer by hand because also you can feel when you're trying to break it free how the bolts feel coming out this way in case one's going to break you might be able to wrap it with a hammer or something like that to prevent that all right let's get this all together so there it is in place and now we're going together with the install basically reverse procedure to install once i get this bolted down completely then i'm going to just blow the area out in there and there with compressed air uh what else oh if you look you can actually see that, see that little tab right there? Right there, that tab, that's part of that metal locking ring. It fits into a receiver groove, which you can see it right next to it. See it right there? That's how you know you're in the right spot. So now I just gotta get that to line up. And once I do that, then I can hook everything else up. So there it is, everything's locked into place. So now basically I just gotta put the cover back on, connect the connector. Like so, you heard it snap, and I do not have any dum-dum like I thought I did, so just put this stuff, this gooey stuff back together. Lay it in place, and push it down firmly to make sure that that's all seated. So that should be good like that. Uh, what else? All right, I think that's it for this this part. Let me take my tools out of here. Let me let me start up and see how it runs. So I decided after all to hook the fuel pressure gauge up to it because I'm curious, and I'm sure you guys are curious. It's just a little bit of a pain on this thing to do it because you got to take the air box and everything else out to disconnect it, and then hook the jumper in between. So let me go ahead. It will have a rough start in the very beginning because now it's got air in a system in the back and it's got air in a system in the front. So let's start it up and see how she does. And then we can actually see the fuel pressure. All right. Start it right up. Let's see what the actual pressure is. Look at that. So that's perfect. That's 49, because the spec was, I think, 44 to 55. 
they did look that up. So that's perfect. Now, I'm curious when I shut it off, it should hold fuel pressure, but let's find out. I could be wrong. It's a deadhead system, meaning it doesn't have a return. And there we go. It's holding pressure. So if you recall in the previous video, it wouldn't start until it got up to about you know 15 psi because that thing would drop right to zero. Now over time, this thing may drop down a little bit. You know, who knows? By the morning, it could be down to 20. It could even be down to you know close to zero. But it always has. It should always have you know that fuel in the line immediately. So as soon as you turn the key, that thing should bump right up. So this thing should fire right off now on a restart. Yep. It would never do that before. Well, there again. We're at 49, so I'm very happy with that. Let me shut it down. And now this way I can disconnect all the tools and stuff from this. Take the gauge off. So. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm, I'm confident this is fixed. So. I mean, as you can see, it was whoever installed that pump didn't do it right. They didn't pay attention. Uh, all it does, all it takes is just a, you know, a few extra minutes to pay attention and do the right thing to get a job done correctly. So anyway, let me get this all back together and then I'm going to road test it. I'm going to clear the check engine light. And like I said, it, it drove actually okay. I mean, it was a little sluggish and it did have a little bit of a hesitation to it, but not, you know, not to the point where you would think it was what it was. All right, if you're getting anything out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Um, I guess that's it for right now. You guys have a great day. Keep brunching.